So, uh, I thought I'd record one of my CD backroom um, <laughs> daily vlogs when I actually had some energy for once. Um, and I thought I'd go over uh, a subject that really chaps my ass, you know? It really chaps my ass. Um, so, <laughs> the subject is one that I have brought up, I think, on this channel before. But if I haven't, I need to give, like, a real solid, like, full-on presentation. I feel like all these, and, and I've said this before, but it bears repeating. I feel like all these daily vlogs uh, need to be fuller videos. Because, like, this is sort of like, I guess, a writing prompt for something that I could talk about for, like, 60 to 120 minutes. And I really can't do it justice in, like, uh, a short, informal vlog at the end of the day. Um, but I did want to talk about it and, you know, feel out some responses. Because this is a subject that is irritating to me to a high degree. And the subject is neo-reaction, um, far-right relabeling, and co-option of anti-statist terminology and um, the idea of the cathedral. That being the far right's version of the state that is directly affiliated with neo-reaction rather than being affiliated with anarchism specifically. Um, that's a problem. For those of you who aren't familiar, neo-reaction is, like, uh, an explicitly far-right ideology uh, that claims to be anti-government, but also highly reactionary. Um, the founder is uh, Curtis Yarvin, Medi Medicus Moldbug, um, and his blog uh, is, is one that basically, like, very few people actually go to, uh, is Unqualified Reservations. Now, I've actually been looking at this for a while because basically there's a lot of people in libertarian circles who follow this guy um, and who support his work. Now, I'm not saying everything he says is wrong. That's very rarely true, that everything somebody says is wrong. But what I am saying is that I disagree with his approach, tactics, and results. <laughs> to say the least. Um... And, again, like, none of this is scripted. I'm just being an asshole in front of a camera. I do a weekly stream uh, relating to these vlogs that, uh, that goes over the comments. If you disagree with me, feel free to tell me why, and I will have a rather spirited discussion with you about your comment at the end of the week. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that if the comments start really rolling in, but uh, I, I try to address all the comments that I can. Um, but that being said, um, this, this subject, so what the cathedral is, is basically the idea that, uh, progressives, and very specifically progressives, um, often conflated with leftists, um, have formed a new, uh, what, what did he call it? I mean, let me, let me pull up the, the word that he used here, um, a new, uh, what is this? Uh, a religious progressivism. Um, the idea is that the the progressives have formed a new a religious church, one that does not believe in a god, but still supports the same sorts of dogmatic and deistic structures, just with new priests and new sort of a deities. Um, and most people who spread the term the cathedral don't think of it that way. And they, they have no intention of considering what the roots of the term are. They just hear cathedral and they think it's another ubiquitous they. Now, there's already a term for what many people use the cathedral to refer to. And that is the state. The state is uh, the summation of everything that serves it. Um, today, I'm not going to say where, but I got into this nice little uh, conversation with some folks, um, and 
basically the conversation went sideways quick because uh <laughs> what I what I said was like somebody wanted an ask me anything question for their AMA and so I asked them why is it that so many right libertarians have a hard time admitting that this state includes the corporations, media, and banks that do their bidding? Um, and uh, somebody replies, people would classify me as right-leaning, and when I say the state, I mean all of the above. And I said, good, I'll talk to anyone who will listen about this. Like, a key criticism of mine is people parroting the cathedral when the state already adequately described it. And uh, I, I got a response, except it doesn't. People separate what they consider to be private entities from the state. And I said, because they're wrong. They don't know the origins of the term, nor the origins of anarchy. Um, <laughs> so uh, that, that was that part of the in interaction. And then the guy goes on further to say, when he comes back, I assume, yeah, it's all the state, but many people don't grasp that that is the case lumping all of those entities under another term makes sense to do. And I said, except it doesn't. And if you already have to explain what the cathedral is, then explaining the same thing and calling it the state makes more sense and has more and better philosophy attached to it. Um, and <laughs> so somebody else comes in and says, if the state was sufficient, the cathedral wouldn't be necessary by definition. And I said, it's not necessary. It's literally just mold bug complaining about progressives. Now, it, it pretty much turned into, like, a lot of people repeating the same stuff, questioning whether or not I actually knew my mold bug. Um, so I thought I would read mold bug today um, from the <laughs> Unqualified Reservations blog that is run by mold bug. The thing I'm going to be reading from today is an open letter to open-minded progressives, chapter 9, How to Uninstall a Cathedral, by Menicus Moldbug, June 12th, 2008. This was basically where he defined what the cathedral is. Um, and <laughs> let me let me read, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, obviously. You know, if you want to, I'll link it in the description, if you want to actually read the whole thing, you're more than welcome to. Maybe someday I'll do, like, a full unqualified uh, uh, criticism of unqualified reservations, but right now, this is just about what the cathedral means. So, I'm going to be going over basically, like, it's like a third into the article. Yeah, around there. But... He says, would it creep you out, dear open-minded progressive, to live in this country? It would certainly creep me out, and I'm not even a progressive, though I was raised as one. An America where every progressive in any position of influence or authority was replaced by an equal and opposite fundamentalist and vice versa is one you would have no hesitation in describing as a fundamentalist theocracy, which implies quite inexorably that the America we do live in, the real one, can be fairly described as a progressive atheocracy, that is, a system of government based on an official a-religion, progressivism. This a-religion is manifest er, is maintained and propagated by the decentralized system of quasi-official educational institutions, which we here at UR have learned to call the cathedral. In this chapter, we'll look purely in a theoretical manner, of course, at what it might take to get rid of this thing. If you find the exercise unpalatable, dear open-minded progressive, just snap the fundamentalins back on and imagine you're trying to free your government from the icy inexorable grip of Jesus or the Pope. The resemblance between anti-fundamentalism and its older brother anti-Catholicism may be too obvious to mention, but I should mention it anyway. Obviously, I don't object to the cathedral on account of its atheism. If a theist can object to theocracy, an atheist can object to atheocracy. I object to the concept of official thought in general, to the details of progressivism in specific, but most of all to the insidious way in which the cathedral has managed to mutate its way around the separation of church and state in which it so hypocritically indoctrinates its acolytes. The cathedral is the apotheosis of chutzpah. It is always poisoning its parents and then pleading for clemency as an orphan. I know, I know, we've been through all this stuff before on the internet, it never hurts to repeat, however, and let's take a brief look at the cathedral's operations, etc., etc. So, basically, the entire thing 
is an anti sort of progressive screed. And, you know, he's got some points with some merit. But let's go over just some minutia here. A religion. Is it? Because there are many places in the U.S. where you can't serve for political office without having sworn on the Bible. And they're trying to get rid of that, well, without having sworn a religion, whatever. Uh, and they're trying to get rid of that in many places, but this was written in 2008. They weren't even fucking trying then. Um, so, there's that. There's the constant um, U.S. foreign aid going to Israel uh, and going to organizations which oppose Islam and which oppose uh, anything basically that lets the military-industrial complex continue to serve the right-wing agenda. Um, and in general, uh, this has created an environment where, no, it's not a religious. In fact, it's very religious. And the assumed progressive takeover is oftentimes uh, just complained about within the context of his threat to religion right? Um, there's a war on Christmas. There's a war on Jesus. There's a war on churches and families and etc. This country is still hev heavily fundamentalist. Th this country is still heavily religious. The idea that it's some kind of progressive monolith where the uh, fundamentalist authority structures have been replaced by progressives, the idea that it's a-religious, laughably absurd. And I gotta tell you, I've read this multiple times, and I have laughed every time. Because it's fucking hilarious when people deny what's in front of them. Just recently, uh, when Israel was bombing press offices and civilians... So many people rushed to their fucking defense. So many people. In office and out. Uh, including in educational systems. Hell, one of the press corps that was bombed. Uh, AP. They fucking fired one of their writers not too long later. Because she tweeted, or she, she Facebook posted anti-Israel sentiment once. It was all based on one fucking post. And the, the, the sentiment was really against bigotry expressed by pro-Israel people. So the progressive was ousted for going against a theocracy. After that theocracy bombed a press office that that person worked for. And this is a government that the U.S. government constantly gives money to, that the media constantly sucked the dick of for, like, years and years. They're only just now starting to say jack shit against them. So the idea that th this is some kind of irreligious hellhole, man, where everything is against God, man, and everything sucks for us religious folks and the progressives are taking over, man, it, it's, it's all, it all comes back to that thing that I talked about in my Hyundai video, where I yelled at a car company. But I didn't just yell at a car company, I yelled at a variety of companies for their co-option of fucking actual genuine causes so that they could maintain their power, so that they could maintain their influence, and so that they could keep making fucking money. Um, so they'll put like a rainbow flag on their bullshit in order to keep making money. They'll keep like, pushing some sort of, like, progressive as a paint layer kind of mentality, and they'll ignore uh, the actual impact that they're having on minorities. They'll ignore the overarching system and how it makes it suck for those who don't have the power that they do. They'll, they'll greenwash to make it seem like they're doing something good for the environment when they're trashing it arguably worse than ever. They'll, they'll whitewash history to make it seem like Bayer isn't a Nazi-affiliated organization and Fanta wasn't the Nazi drink of choice. 
<laughs> the idea that there's some sort of progressive takeover is a facile interpretation of what's going on. And again, this is a big-ass blog post. It's a big-ass blog post. I don't have time to go over it all in one day. In fact, in order to fully refute all of the things that he says, I'd have to go against his entire fucking blog and devote all of my time to it, which is something I'm not going to do. But what I will say is that this, like... This 14-chapter anti-progressive screed, um, including the cathedral as a progressive-only institution of power, uh, is fucking shallow. It's extremely shallow. And the idea that it's not shallow, the idea that it's deep, um, it boggles the mind. Uh, you can rarely find him going on screeds against rightists, as far as I've seen. Because reaction is anti-progressivism. Neo-reaction is still just anti-progressivism. You know? And the idea that it's not just anti-progressivism belies fact. Um, which means that he'll take the rightist position because progressives aren't there. Reaction is literally called that because it's a reaction to progressivism. It's, you're a progressive, you're doing X, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go backward. You, you want this progress, I don't want this progress. Now, we can argue the merits of certain progress, you know, we can argue the merits of certain progressive mentalities. I certainly have in the past. Uh, I'm very notable for having said repeatedly that equality is impossible because no two particles are alike. So no two masses of particles are alike and no two like uh, beings created of these masses of particles will be alike and no, um, no social system based on unlike beings will ever be like. So my, my personal uh, mentality is that everybody should be given the opportunity to rise up from their level. Whatever your gender, whatever your race, whatever, etc. You should be able to rise and be the best version of yourself you can be. Which means fundamentally being un unequal to those who are not willing to put in as much effort as you are. That's my mentality. And, like, I've used that to dismantle a lot of progressive mentalities. I'm not a fan of a lot of progressive mentalities, but to say that the progressives are controlling everything and to say that the state is completely comprised of progressives or at least comprised enough that the educational institutions amount to a cathedral which is secretly operating the machinery behind everything is not true. And the term, the state, already existed. The state already existed as a defined term, already existed and was being used by right libertarians as a defined term. Now, right libertarians and left libertarians often lamentably disagree on what constitutes the state. I fucking hate that because the idea that it's suddenly like not the government who granted so much land and power to monopolistic companies and then allowed them to form corporations which got special privileges and support from the state, including bailouts and regulatory capture. The idea that the government isn't chiefly responsible for how things have been allocated and distributed um, for, for, for centuries now. The idea that the state is not responsible for the way current capitalism runs and the idea that state capitalism is not a significant threat to anarcho-capitalism, which is not state capitalism, which is the alternative to the way things are, is fucking absurd. The, like, all of this is true. <laughs> and, and, I, and I rail against this sort of thing on a regular basis. The banks that make and manage your money are corrupt statist institutions. The corporations 
that allow everything to happen the way it is and maintain the status quo, increasing their power and reducing the power of the small person by squeezing them out of the market using the state, are statists. The media, which sucks the state's cock every time it gets the opportunity, is also a state institution. All the uh, social media and internet magnates who got a huge amount of money and support from the state and now are the state's virtual fleshlight, uh, pleasuring them whenever they want and giving them whatever they want in terms of controlling people, they're also the state. The state comprises all of these entities and more. But many right libertarians don't want to admit this because then it means that they have to acknowledge that state capitalism is still a type of capitalism and they can't just say capitalism is only the free market. Newsflash, the free market has never existed. Never. It could and I would love it to exist. An unrestrained ability to trade freely and voluntarily would be great. Right now, we have a monopolistic system of state control over the markets, over the media, over politics, over every minutia of your life. And that's the state. It's no wonder that they also control education from the ground up. But you know where they got their education model? From basically proto-fascist military indoctrination fascism. Like, the Prussian model, school, the reason so many of our words for schooling are in German, kindergarten, <laughs> the reason so many of, of the, the tactics and tools used um, are to enforce groupthink and crush the individual so that everything serves the benefit of the school and anybody who doesn't is crushed? Fascism indoctrination. Fascism training. Nothing about the way the school system is set up is overtly progressive. And I know what you're going to say. You know, we've got critical race theory, man. We've got gender XYZ. Sure, now. Right? First off, very little of that in 2008 when this definition was written, when the cathedral was coined, right? Very little of that. And two, um, when you're talking about, like, <laughs> these, these corrupt institutions of education, uh, they still fundamentally say you should spend money. They still fundamentally say that you should interact with this state capitalist market. They still fundamentally say that you should follow the law, call the cops, participate in the system, be a good little boy and or girl, and eventually you might make it. And if you don't, you will be singled out. You will be ostracized. You will be sent home on suspension and a burden to your parents. You will be cast out of society. You will be the loser that is ruining it for everybody. I was that loser, right? I was the kid who went against the grain significantly enough that the teacher punished the class in, a, in an attempt to get me to change due to peer pressure. They couldn't prove me wrong, so instead they chose to do that. And you know what? I almost really bit the fascist bullet there. I almost went fashy, like real full fash for my entire adult life. I almost joined the military, would have been easy for me to do, I had great ASVAB scores. Um, I, I almost, you know, shilled for the intelligence agencies. I almost changed my entire destiny. And then I started to think, you know, logically um, about <laughs> the way the school system had raised me and thought, maybe this isn't for me. So when people tell me <laughs> that the cathedral is exclusively progressive and then say that the cathedral is controlling education, I say fucking bullshit because of my experience and the experience of so many other people. Um, maybe some of it is. Maybe it's more this way in other uh, towns and or cities that I didn't grow up in. I don't fucking know. But what I do know is what I lived, what I experienced. 
and what so many other people did as well. Um, and I know for a fact that um, so many colleges will only go so far as to teach you the progressivism that lets you continue being a good little boy or girl. They will not teach you how to fundamentally uproot the state that pays their fucking wages. They won't. They won't help you uh, fight the government. They'll only help you be a rebel if that rebellion is something that they can use as a feather in their cap. They're not progressives. They're shit libs. 90% of them, I fucking guarantee you, 90% of people involved in education are shit libs. They're neoliberals and neocons who are, are, are like this close to being together, this close to touching, this close to being able to fuck, right? And they have this weird incestuous relationship where they'll fan their plumage and occasionally have disagreements, <laughs> fucking dance around each other for a bit and then go back to business as usual. It's the state. It's not the cathedral. It's progressives and conservatives and reactionaries. The idea that they're not both working for the same system, the idea that there's a way to be a reactionary without, you know, going back to times when the government was bigger for certain people is kind of fucking asinine. And I oppose it. Because it sucks. Um, but I catch flack for it, like, all the fucking time. Uh, because... I, you know, for the first part of my libertarian content-making career, I went pretty hard against the right. Well, sorry, the left. And I, and I went against the left because I foolishly believed that Obama qualified. I was one of those people who thought Obama was leftist, even though he was fundamentally doing all the same shit that Bush was doing. And if Bush is a right-winger, then so is Obama. And so is Biden. Um, and I was one of the people who did that, so I fell in with that crowd. And I don't dislike a lot of the people in that crowd. I just think some of them are wrong about the way that they approach this, especially since I've sort of broadened my horizons and listened to a lot of people who aren't in that group. Um, sort of looked at a lot of writing from a lot of different perspectives. And that's why three or four years ago, I started talking about anarcho-coalitionism, where we could potentially um, work together, uh, you know, get some class solidarity going against the ruling class, against the government. Um, because that sounds real fucking swell compared to what we have now. Only now that the cathedral appears to have installed Biden, um, only now are right-wingers starting to entertain seriously the concept of working with BLM and Antifa. Only now are they starting to seriously entertain the concept of working with the left. But only some of them, right? Only some. Because ultimately, a lot of them are still stuck in that mentality, and a lot of them have embedded interests, and a lot of them have, like, you know, things that they don't want to lose, that they might lose if they start questioning um, the idea of the cathedral, which ironically forms a cathedral. If you can't question the concept of the cathedral, if you can't say that something else might be better, and bounce the merits off of the ideas themselves then you're talking about an establishment. The establishment has been remade in the form of a rhetorical wall that you can't get around. A wall that surrounds everything, maybe with stained glass ceilings depicting the people you can't criticize and the ideas you can't touch. Like, like, like a church building of some sort? Like, oh, like a cathedral. It's almost like when you try to silo up and act like the sides are predetermined 
and immovable and immutable. Um, it's almost when, like, like when you use these sides that were created by the powers that should not be, when you sort of move yourself into one of multiple pre-made, prefabricated camps that these people set up, when you march into their camps, don't be surprised when you're doing their work for them. The ultimate truth is that we live under friendly fascism, not a cathedral. The progressive veneer that they put over shit is a coat of paint, and it usually only lasts a day, a week, a month. Not all year. Most of the time, they don't give a fucking shit. You know? I don't see Amazon's We Support Black Lives Matter thing anymore banner on their website. They took it down because the season was over. Like taking down a Christmas tree. These people don't actually give a fuck. They just don't want to lose money. They don't want to lose consumers. They don't want to lose their state capitalist interests while Jeff Bezos can take CIA money to manipulate the media. And it's the same all the way the fuck around. They all rely on the state, so they're going to kiss the state's ass at every available opportunity. The state is the problem, not the cathedral. And the state, as a term, already existed. So the question is, why change? Why go with this relative neologism? Why help it spread when the idea directly links back to a very specific set of ideas? Why would I use a term that if I truly want to explain what it means, I kind of have to say, yeah, you know what? Go to Menicus Moldbug's blog. Curtis Yarvin wrote this thing, and I'm going to spread it. No, I don't think I will. Anatomy of the State is a right-wing approach to anti-statism. And it's relatively good. So is a significant amount of leftist literature that existed long before Rothbard was born. The state already exists as a term and it already works. I am not going to sacrifice decades, centuries of history for a, a, a neologism that doesn't help anybody but a select few NRX members. And I'm certainly not going to do it in support of libertarianism, which already has adequate terms here, which has spent all this time and effort to build cohesive models, both on the left and the right. I'm going to throw that away because... A uh, series of blog posts written in 2008 comes along and wants to relabel everything and put it all on the shoulders of the progressives? No. I won't fucking do it. And that's why I needed to do this when I had a little bit more energy, because this is nearly 34 minutes long. So time to complete that. Uh, this is brought to you by Opsec Drip. Uh, feel free to check out that link and hit subscribe for 240 glorious pixels of libertarian news, shemog born, and very short. Uh, feel free to also subscribe to mine. Um, and with that being said, smash the state.